I'm Angela Pasolacqua at Blackfish Gallery, and I entitled the show Honeyed Moon. A big part of the show was having the Oregon Poet Laureate Paul Ann Peterson uh -huh. come to a reading at the work, and I was going to do a response. This one is, is um, entitled Passport Pages, uh -huh. and I didn't realize the word passport appears in the poem. And I didn't real realize until I checked my own passport that that honeycomb shape, that six-sided hexagonal figure, actually is in your passport. That was kind of a revelation to me. These cards, one of them is dedicated to one of her poems and another one to one of Pablo Neruda's poems. These are recycled works for a show that I did oh, four or five years ago, and they were exhibited as individual poetry cards, and I thought that they would be wonderful if they were put together and regrouped. Completely new composition was composed out of them. So these are the two paintings that are in response to her work. There are very few paintings of the moon in Western art, mm -hmm. and I had just come back from Tokyo to see mm -hmm. an exhibit featuring the work of Hiroshigi, A Hundred Views of Edo, or mm -hmm. something like that. And the moon figures predominantly in a lot of a lot of his prints, and I think that's true of a lot of Japanese prints. And I wanted to see what I could do with that. I mean, mm -hmm. the moons are very mysterious, they're romantic, they're, they're dark. For I the most a rose part, uh, image here. there's a rose image in that, and the rose, actually, this painting is based on a poem by Pablo Neruda, and there's a line in there about a sudden rose. And I wanted this image of, of protection and vulnerability and travel and a voyage. And I also wanted it to be moving, like the horse isn't really standing still. Mm -hmm. And I thought that rose, if I could make that rose vibrate as well as the horse, it would, it would convey some movement in an otherwise mm -hmm. rather still painting. The next three images or paintings I'm going to talk about have drapery imagery in them. And I've always loved doing drapery, and it became very relaxing. Uh, this, this particular image of drapery is from a virgin's robe as it rests on a, on a windowsill in like the 15th century. And I wanted it to be a very, very heavy fabric, very weighty, because this poem by Neruda talks about him building his home in Valparaiso and wanting to make this tower dance. And I thought if I was going to have this tower dance, the drapery would figure as his part as its partner, but it had to be the same vintage, would be very, very heavy cloth and be very, very substantial. And it's an idea that I think with the moon works. It's kind of a magical piece. And I also wanted to reference just putting down roots in this piece. The tower's really anchored, the cloth is really heavy, and the trees are rooted and there's an anchor and there's a key in here. And hopefully the key gives you an entryway into the painting. This painting is, is more, rather than the moon is fading, it's more daylight, it's kind of a pinkish dawn, and the moon is, is a shadow moon. The drapery in this painting is actually taken from a gown and a Velasquez saint, I think Santa Eustacia, and loosely based on that anyway. And the drapery here is actually be being very protective over these two towers. Again, we have time figuring as a theme, and we've got roses again as a theme, the vulnerability and the perishableness of life. The cranes are a good luck almond and are, are veering off to hopefully good times. But there is a sense of vulnerability also. I was painting this at the time of the BP oil spill, and the pelicans were, the pelicans were basically suffered terribly from that. This painting is, is entitled Swimmers in the Sky, and you know there's a female figure here getting ready to dive in, the male figure is diving in. These columns here are diving platforms, really. It's taken from a medieval manuscript where they were actually stairs. The drapery in this piece, I meant to be very, very active, and I meant it to be protective as falling into the drapery and then landing in the water softly. The diver also was diving into the drapery and diving into the pool. It's a monkey or an ape, animals actually to convey innocence 
And I think the monkey sort of looking up at the moon underneath this tree is, is just trying to interpret it all and trying to enjoy what he's seeing around him. It's sort of a mystical aspect and mysterious aspect to all of this. And, you know, again, I'm dealing with themes of time. There's the hourglass here and the diver and the pool water and the feather. I think the poem ends up as the poet's trying to dive into the air so he becomes so small that he doesn't remember his name and he becomes so light he just sort of disappears. And I had this idea that it would be great to kind of disappear into this painting. So I put the feather in there to Are make it as light oil as or possible. Acrylic? They're all oil. Uh-huh. Yeah, every piece is an oil in and this you have work. And a shiny, uh, uh, is that, how do you make it to the The shiny? surface is, I believe it's a reaction between the type of uh, gesso I use. It's rabbit skin glue gesso, mm-hmm. and it's warm when I put it on, and the paint, adhe- and the paint actually gets sucked into it, almost like that first layer is like a fresco. And subsequent layers become very, very transparent, and I think that gives it a shininess to it. Is this the only drawing here? There's a drawing in the window as well. Well, the one in the window is more of a montage, but this drawing was the first piece I did, and I knew the show was coming up, and so I wanted it to be kind of like a lab for the subsequent paintings that we're going to evolve out of it. So I have the image of the horse and time and time flying mm-hmm. and um, man thinking of the heart uh-huh. and kind of looking very fondly and contemplatively uh-huh. at these horses and again the image of the suitcase. Yeah. And this couple so here, couple here with the... The couple here, this is an interesting work for me in that it was the first piece I've done where usually I pack the composition so tightly that I end up painting things out. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen in this one. In this one, I actually had to reference the poem again to figure out what was needed, because I had the two figures and the the moon. This is entitled Two Rows of of Tenderness. But something was missing, and what was missing was that this took place in an orchard. Again, that theme of anchored. I mean, the ship is anchored, and there's the moon and the sky. It's, is the ship in water, or is it in the sky? I, I, that was deliberate on my part. Mm. Looks like a Buddha. Well, it's actually based on a Persian angel um, from like a 16th century manuscript. And I wanted to have her to be taking the measure of the moon. Mm. And I wanted to do and play around with sort of astronomical signs and images for a long mm-hmm. time. This is the last painting in this exhibit that I finished and it was in response to Pollyanne Peterson's poem and there's a line in it, Drink the Divine Um, and I wanted to focus on kind of the ecclesiastical uh, implications of that in this painting and I wanted to have many, many, many layers and I wanted it to look as thick and as opaque and as transparent and crusty as honey can look like in a hive. I had been to a show of Henry Moore this summer, and I saw a lot of his montage drawings, which were taken right from his sketchbook and and incorporated with paint and ink and pencil and all sorts of different media. And I thought that was something that I wanted to try. I wanted to try to pick up images out of my sketchbook and preparatory drawings and combine them into a new piece. I had just gotten back from Tokyo, and so the piece definitely has a very Asian influence to it. But I love this way of working and just, you know, grabbing pieces from this body of work that, you know, has a cohesiveness to it and then making an entirely new new piece out of that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>